Hey, what is up, guys? This is Cobb, and Mr. Steelson over here is breaking my heart, man. He started off as quick supply specialist and didn't go for the quad sledgehammer opener. Dude, the meme potential was right there on a plate. But then again, if you're a 2K MMI, you can't really get away with nonsense like we do in most of our videos. <laughs> and so this is going to be a, a more high MMR breakdown of what we've got going down here. So instead of picking up one pack of phoenixes, and funnily enough, our opponent also does the same thing, who is playing aerial specialist. And yeah, still seeing just banking 150 supply. as quick supply specialist here. Only spending 250 on grabbing these phoenixes. Let's see how this goes, man. Red, unsurprisingly, holding on to both packs of Stormcallers. No round one sells on those, given that he's gone up against Fangs and Sledgehammers, uh, insofar as he can see so far. Which I could assume that this is what the Phoenixes are for, right? Just have the Phoenixes on field, kind of guarantees you the win, unless your opponent goes into some anti-air. And, um, yeah. That's it for round one. Now, I'm going to be trying to cover a couple of, I guess, concepts... Uh, in this video, it's not gonna be a super super hardcore guide, but there's a lot of new players man hopping on the Mechabellum train since the free-for-all patch and so Welcome to the channel if you've you know just started playing somewhat recently in Mechabellum. I'm gonna try and cover some um, Not like beginner concepts, but like fundamentals that I think that these like 2k MMR players get absolutely on point uh, On the button that you gotta start doing as soon as possible in your games, especially if you're struggling a little bit to come to grips with Mechabellum. And you're getting your ass kicked just a little bit. Still saying opting into the triple marksman. Okay, I thought that maybe the fire badges might have been a choice here. Just fire badges here, fire badges here. Just to line up into the crawlers that were already on field. But hey, goes into an extra pack of sledges. Sledges can do okay into crawlers. That's something that still has got to be a little bit aware of, I think is that he doesn't have the best chaff clear in this army. No fire badges, no arc lights, uh, no stangs, like mustangs that can be built with something like high explosive ammo. It's something that he's got to be a little bit careful of or he could end up losing some chaff battles later on. The chaff placement is tight. Crawlers come in just in time. We lose quite a big bunch of fangs over here before the crawlers get in and start to distract, which is a little bit unfortunate, but no one steals him. We'll probably get some crawlers uh, a little bit deeper in, maybe in the frontier, to distract the hell out of the stone crawlers as the game goes on. We'll see how that develops. So Red actually opted into the scorpions, man. Which I'm not sure how I feel about that. I guess the scorpions were picked up just in case a crap load of sledgehammers came out. And I guess there are three packs of sledges on the field. So the scorpions should get some value. Obviously, it's really best at just denying... Uh, enemy giant control. Uh, ground giants, that is. I'm not sure it was the best possible option he could have gone for, though. Okay. I almost feel like the Maximum might have just been a better option for Red as well, to be honest. But hey, the tankiness of the Scorpion, yep, looks like it's going to secure Red this round at least. And so he swings back at Steely Boy. I'm going to have a quick sip of coffee. Hmm. Deployment Specialist. Tasty stuff. There it is. Another Scorpion comes out for red. He's really, really doubling down on that. Okay, so Steel Sin has a couple of options here. Big pointer for new players, by the way. Oh, wow. Okay, Steel Sin's actually doing it. Is to really fill out your chaff units, your small units, right? The crawlers, the fangs. Oh, my God. Okay, he's really pushing it, which is awesome to see. Um, Just illustrates the point perfectly. In the first three rounds... This is when you want to be spamming out your chaff units, right? This is when you want to get these guys on the field. In the later rounds, when you have like 1,200, 1,400, or 1,600 plus supply to spend, you don't want to be spending that supply on a 100 cost pack of crawlers. It's just inefficient, right? Um, and you end up like buying random techs to try and fill out your turn and stuff. It's better just to spend the early turns to get multiple layers of chaff on the field. So right now we've got the opening wave here that are going to come in and collide. And as soon as these guys start to die, we get the late arriving crawlers here. They take over now and we're just protecting the tanks and the phoenixes, right? And this is so useful to know for newer players. And look at this. As these crawlers start to die, what have we got, man? We've got another pack of fangs arriving nice and late, right? So you're trying to stagger the chaff units. And I think Steelson's so good at this, by the way. 
I think it's so good at this. Like, these phoenixes have never been at risk of dying even a single time this round. Because the chaff is just creeping in ahead. And even the sledgehammers are just kind of being used as, like, pseudo chaff, I feel. Uh, at this stage of the game, at least. Like, it's just a constant trickle that always stays in front of the maximum units and the phoenix units, right? And just protects those guys as the carry. Feels good, man. Feels pretty solid so far. Still, I feel like we're lacking a little bit of chaff clear here. I'd be a little bit concerned about that. Uh, missile strike, missile strike. Okay, fair enough. I think that's fine. No strike specialist shenanigans fit to go on. Missiles tend to go here or here on like the backline waves. This is much, much greedier. Steel Sin will probably barrier against this. Because you're probably going to drop the barrier here, right? I think if you were red here, you should really be dropping a missile like here. So it kills off these crawlers, right? Because it's really, really awkward for blue to shield against that. Because uh, if they pick the wrong side to shield or something, they still die anyway. Even if they block the barrier, it never gets value again for the rest of the game. It just blocks one missile. Yeah, it's much more safer to missile the backline chaff at that stage. Also looks like Steel Sin went greedy as well with his missile too. Which, likewise, I, I, I don't know, man. I just really, really like the, like, the backline missiles, you know? Um, it's so, so awkward to defend against. Okay, wow. So Steel Sin buys... Was that like four Maxmen he just dropped? Four Maxmen, dude. Okay. Elite Maxmen, tech, range enhancement, aerial specialization... Electromag shot. Further fangs come down as well. I guess just to protect these blue tanks a little more. Okay. I'm just trying to keep an eye on how blue's chaff is colliding in here. They have about equal spacing of chaff, man. Like, as these fangs die, these fangs behind start to trickle in as well. So both players honestly do an excellent, excellent job of staggering in uh, these waves of chaff here. Funnily enough, I feel like both players actually have pretty lackluster chaff clear. <laughs> we do see an acolyte or two uh, come out uh, for red, but it's a hell of a lot of chaff for just two acolytes to take care of, right? Both teams kind of itching for a Vulcan at this point, but without really the supply to get it done. It's a little awkward. Hmm. I just wonder, would it not be worth... It's kind of a tough position if you're red, right? Because you can't really go into a melting point this early on and start producing crawlers. Subterranean blitz on the crawlers to increase their move speed um, would be useful. But not that useful because they're not up against fire just yet. It's a bit of an awkward spot, man. Still, I do think that the biggest weakness in Steel Sins army so far is probably chaff clear. Shield airdrop comes out. Incendiary bomb here. See me, I like the... Uh... Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Okay, all kinds of tech drops going on. Let me slow this down just a little bit. So we see plus range come out on the maxman. This is kind of just locking in the maxman, I guess, uh, as the carry unit. I also want to point out as well to any newer players watching, Steel Sin hasn't bought a single tech until round five. Right. All too often, newer players, man, they really, really want to push a unit right away. And start upgrading it. And, you know, oh, the sledgehammer is going to be my carry unit, man. It's going to be sweet. And they end up grabbing, you know, mech ridge and range on, like, round three. <laughs> and it's generally not ideal. You usually want to hold out until you're sure that a unit type is safe, right? Um, It's going to be safe into what your opponent is doing, you know? Um, I will say that when you're up against incendiary bomb, me, personally, I prefer to place the shields a bit further forwards. I tend to be a bit risky with that and try to just put the shield a bit further forwards. And you know what? If they place it on my back line here, well, it sucks. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know. I, tend, I, I try to be a little bit more aggro with my shields, I guess. Then again, that's probably a mistake, right? That's probably the that's probably the incorrect player to place it forwards because then the Stormcallers will kill it and it won't get to heal uh, going into next round. So what the hell do I know, you know? Okay. Let's hurry things along. So we did see the high explosive ammo come out on the Stormcallers here. Which these Stormcallers are getting rushed down by these middle crawlers now. Which is damn good crawler positioning. And okay. 
So the high explosive ammo on the Stormies should make them much, much more effective at killing off Steel Sins Chaff, which is going to cause these crawlers for red to be a much, much bigger problem. Going into Steel Sin here, the tank's getting absolutely clapped by the Scorpions. Utterly, utterly eviscerated. And he who wins the chaff battle tends to win the war in Mechabellum. And there's a hell of a lot of fangs still left over for red. Last phoenix goes down. The barrier looks like it's going to fall after all. Fangs are all just going to uh, match to their deaths at least. But still, it's going to be a smidgen of damage here. Okay, what do we got? Wraith, Sabretooth. Ooh. Sabretooth. Fortress, maybe? I mean, it's Sabretooth or Fortress, right? You can't really go the Wraiths into Red's Phoenixes, the Steel Sin. Sabretooth. Okay, man. Okay, dude. This is it. The missile interceptor play comes out right, because Red's only real way of getting the chaff dead here, he has three level one Acolytes, which I mean is fine. It's a little bit of something, but Red having committed into high explosive ammo here makes it so that his storm crawlers are actually doing a lot of the chaff clearing work. Uh, they're also getting distracted here by the crawlers at the front now. Both of these packs of storm crawlers, uh, all three actually. So that's just always a sweet little placement when you're up against stormies. But yeah, man. The missile interceptor Sabertooths should ensure that this late arriving chaff all the way over here on the back line should get to live that extra little bit longer. Maybe even these crawlers too will get to live that extra little bit longer with the Sabertooths shooting down the missiles. Dude, I love this tech on the Sabertooths. Can I just say? It feels so good. I really, really like it. Okay, we're also going to do a little bit of wiggle strategy. On that one side. The question is, how does Red actually beat this now? Because, by the way, again, as the game goes on, we're on round six now. And I still feel like Chaff Clear is not... Um, is, is not Steel Sin's strong suit at this stage. And so could the crawlers be leveraged more here by red? Just give them subterranean blitz and maybe even replicate. And, ju and just get them in there. You know, start hitting the high mobility button instead of the enhanced range button. Stop trying to beat the maxman at range, you know. Ooh, it actually wasn't enough in the end at all. To st uh, save Steel Sand from a boatload of damage. Okay, Vulcan's Descent? No. Nah. Orbital, blah, blah, blah. Both players going for the orbital, and so we're going to have to save all kinds of supply here for shields. Ooh. Was that field recovery purchase from Steel Sand? What did he sell? Did I miss something? I think it was already used on something. I just completely missed whatever the hell it was. Okay. All right, so Steel Sin overspends a little bit here, so he goes ahead and borrows cash, and that is going to be to drop down the shields. Which all makes sense. We also see Elite Maxman come out on the Maxman boys. Yeah. I don't know, man. I kind of feel like at this stage, like this would have been a fantastic turn to pull the trigger on the crawlers if Red had maybe spotted the slight weakness in Steel Sin's army. It's a very slight weakness, by the way. Um... But I just wonder if Subterranean Blitz replicate this turn might not have been might not have been the play, might not have been it, might not have been the thing. It's a damn tough call. We got some well balanced armies here. It's like the only weakness I can see. That and maybe like Wasp Chaff for Red. Like I'm not sure how he's building his wasps, but. Relying on just fangs and maxmen to kill off your wasps. I don't know, man. Maybe wasps would be, would be a good buy for red. Some mothership overlords, even. Something like that. Oh, yo, 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 yo. Well, it looks like on this occasion it is going to be enough. The maxmen now actually doing pretty solid damage. Just outright 
outgunning the scorpions. Not quite on this side. These are two level one maximum, sadly. So they're going to get absolutely eviscerated. But I'm pretty sure it's the... Oh my god, the buildings die at exactly the same time. Don't think these maxmen can do this, right? Oh, never mind. The scorpions don't have siege mode. Oh, they still lose anywhere. Okay. Oh my god. Steel Sin lives on 88 health. Okay. Takes fishless underground. Okay, dude. Red's got underground threat now. I feel like he's got to go all in on the crawlers now. Like, if he's going to do it, this is the turn, right? Because he gets to spawn crawlers in on the back line. He's got to keep them away from... I mean... Maybe drop them in here. Maybe here. He could even just plop them in, like, right here, man. Just, like, somewhere off to a side... Where they're not gonna, where they're, where they're not gonna get like counted, you know. He does actually go into the replicate. He's got enough supply for subterranean blitz and plus speed here. He could go ahead and do it. Steelson actually going into the storm callers and also into high explosive ammo. Dude, have I just been sleeping on this tech? I never pick this, ever, man. What the hell do I know, you know? So four packs of Stormcallers come out, all spread out. Which, by the way, would defend pretty nicely against the Subterranean Blitz. The shields on the fangs don't mean too much for either player now that they both have high explosive ammo. But hell. Ah, I don't know, even with the Replicate, man. I, I just think without the move speed. You know, maybe even Replicate Mechanical Ridge. Just for the attack interval, uh, and, and just get these crawlers killing stuff off quickly. Could have been the player. I just feel like right now they're going to be too slow. Like, even right here, we've got, like, the backstab coming in. Look at these missiles. They're gone. Yeah, that's it. They're actually gone. <laughs> I was half exaggerating, but they're actually gone. Oh, God. It's rough going, man. It's rough going. To be fair, that again was very, very well preempted by Steelzin. Maybe he actually spotted that. Oh, okay. Maybe there could be some crawler techs coming out here now that the subterranean blitz is in play. You know what I'm saying? Maybe that was just a read that he got, just a hunch that he got that that was coming, and that's why he went into the uh, explosive ammo storm callers. But hell, man, the maxman continued to scale. And to be honest, it's at this point, by the way, that I feel like round eight, this is when elite maximum units start to become increasingly horrifying. Because it's like elite maximum when you first buy it isn't that big of an upgrade. It's a damage bump. It's a small range increase, you know, five range per level, whatever. But now, round eight, like, and the units are still gaining levels and they're just scaling and scaling and scaling. Vulcans on the field, by the way, is a huge, huge drop. Actually, for both players, I think it's a huge, huge drop. Yeah. Um, I don't know, man. I feel like when you're up against an elite maximum build like this, your window for winning the game starts to close rather quickly. Like, you've got to win sooner rather than later. Uh, okay, Vulcan with range comes out for Steelson. I think Red actually sold one of the Vulcans? Guess he did. Okay. I'm almost a little... Ooh, okay. Never mind. I was, I was actually about to say, um, I wonder if Steel Sin's going to go ahead and buy the sticky oil bomb here and just deploy it, like, right here. Or, like, right here, even. Like, as far in as he can. And just set the world on fire with his Vulcans. And so Steel Sin, in the end, that goes into Subterranean Blitz. What did I call this earlier? I called something else Subterranean Blitz. I called Underground Threat Subterranean Blitz area, uh, earlier. Sorry, boys. I'm getting my damn crawler text mixed up. Yeah, Subterranean Blitz. Awesome buy. When you know that you're up against Incendiary Bomb and you need your crawlers to survive in the fire a little longer than they usually would. Uh, obviously, it's fantastic. I guess he also knows that he's going to be up against Vulcan. Or at least he's got a pretty good sense. He's going to be up against Vulcan. Red, this is a very, very wishful flank indeed. Like, Red has got to know at this point that the Vulcans are going to come down. I feel like Red's only play for this round. By the way, I don't know, man, just spam wasps. <laughs> like, seriously, I think that actually spam wasps might have been the only play that could work. And that's a big could. 
just because the Maxman is so inefficient at killing wasps off, the fangs might be a bit of a problem. But then again, you've got the Vulcans to maybe take care of the fangs if you position the Vulcans correctly. Maybe that could have worked for red. But oi, 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 oi. There it is, man. Those are all just maybe micro advantages that maybe red could have extracted from this game. But they were very, very small indeed. And like I say, man, when you get a maximum build like this one and running, we've actually got a five-star maximum over here, dude. This guy's an absolute giga chad. 220 meter range. Becomes increasingly rough to come back from. Ooh, red has another 10 to do this. Elite Wasp! Do it! I think that's actually, like, potentially rather good. Honestly. I think I, I feel like it would really be out of left field. No! <laughs> no, Alpha Dude! I mean it would have been hilarious. I don't I'm not I'm not sure that it actually would have worked, but it would have been really funny. He has a lot of supply to spend too. What text has he got? He's even running energy shield! I genuinely think that could have been good. Like, really. Maybe just energy shield elite maxman. I feel like, and then just like a triple drop, because he's also running Deployment Specialist, right? He is. And then and just, just spam Elite Wasps. Like, it would really slow the Maxman down. The Fangs would be annoying to get through, but not the worst. Oh, but I sold the Vulcan, though, to get that money, so he actually didn't have that much tech. Okay, oh, well, either way, the Elite Wasps do not come out, which is always sad to see. Still seeing them borrowing some cash. What's that going to go on? 300 supply left. The missile coming in uh, from Steel Sim, by the way. Love this missile. There it is. The backline missile comes in. Very, very difficult to shield against that because if you drop a shield back here and yeah, it doesn't block anything, it's just 100 supply down the drain. <laughs> Feels really, really awful. And he's still going for the greedy missiles, is uh, Mr. Red. Even though he could hit a shot right here on a couple packs of chaff. That is rather greedy. And okay. So we do have a bit of a wall of phoenixes come out now with range enhancement. Um, but the truth is that this far, like they're so far behind these elite maxman maxman at this stage. So they're just super, super outranged. Um, but more important than that, they're just not winning the chaff battle anymore, right? Because these storm callers were doing a lot of work against the chaff. But now the sabertooths also have some levels. Oh my god, that Sabertooth just eviscerated the Scorpion over there. And the Sabertooths are shooting down so, so many of the missiles that the Chaff are actually sticking around for quite a long time. Sabertooths only just start to die off now, uh, the higher level ones that is. And so in the end, it becomes quite an emphatic victory for Steel Zen. And dude, what I love most about this actually, is that there are levels to Chaff management in Mechabellum, dude, right? Level 1 is just have chaff on the field, right? Level 1 is this pack of fangs and like this pack of fangs and this pack of fangs and maybe these guys, you know. Like just the frontline standard chaff that are going to block some damage. That's it. Level 2 is the late arrivals. These guys. These guys, right? These, like, like I guess these crawlers here as well. But like level 3 and 4 is not getting any techs on your... Sledgehammers, so you don't care if they die, right? They're like pseudo chaff at that point. And they're arriving in like third. Like the, these guys are like the third wave of chaff because they're like slower than these crawlers, you know? And then you have the level four wave of chaff, which is the super slow fangs, which arrive very, very late to the fight as the sledgehammers are dying. So it's like four waves of chaff, dude, in this army. <laughs> and then not just that, but you're also buying time for the frontline chaff as well because of the missile defense and the saber tooth, which is just counting our opponent's chaff clear and really throwing a spanner in the wax and just buying so, so much time for what is a very slow army uh, in these maxmen, right? Very, very slow to kill off most units to have like a, a maxman army like this. But they just buy so much time because of the uh, the chaff management, you know. Awesome to see. And hey, man, again, if you're new to Mechabellum, I hope that you learn something new. We try to do some educational stuff in between the memory on this channel every now and again, man. So if you enjoyed this video, make sure to hit like, subscribe and all that good stuff. And you know what? If you've got your own crazy, crazy replay that you want to share that you have in Mecha, make sure to share that replay in the Share Your Replay channel of the official Mecha Bottom Discord, which is always linked down below. And there's a pretty damn good chance that, well, at least I'll look at it, whether or not I'll get to analyze it in a video like this and break it down and react to it, 
Well, that's a whole other thing. Anyways, thanks for watching, guys. Hope you all did enjoy. And I'm going to catch all of you all just a tad bit later.